Some call him a mentor. Others call him a spiritual father. His goal is to help people discover the ultimate in Christian living. His name is Dr. Lewis Gregory, and he's my guest today on Babby's House. It's coming up right now. Welcome back to Babby's House. I'm privileged to have on today's show Dr. Lewis Gregory, the author of a brand new book called The New You. It's his, his ultimate uh, goal to help us discover our God-given potential and to bring out the the God likeness in us. The uh, subtitle of his book is The Ultimate Makeover. Welcome to Babby's House, Dr. Gregory, and thanks for coming today. No, thank you. Absolutely. Glad to be with yeah, you. Glad that you could be here. Yeah. And uh, you and I met at the uh, American Association of Christian Counselors uh, annual conference in, in Nashville just a, a little while ago. And uh, ever since then, I've been anxious to get you on the show and talk about your book because it seems like. Um, People are always wanting to know uh, their their purpose in life, and that that mm -hmm. age old question, who am I, and why am I here, and and I'm I'm glad that you're going to give us uh, just a little more information that kind of clue us in on the reason why God made us like He did and His ultimate purpose for us. So talk to me about the uh, inspiration behind this book. Okay, uh, in many ways, I guess the book is the story of my life. Um, I had the privilege of meeting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior when I was 11 years old. But uh, although I met him, I didn't really know him. And over the years, actually about 10 years, I learned a lot about him. I was blessed with some good solid Bible teaching and uh, certainly had access to the Word of God and was uh, knowledgeable in Scripture. But I really didn't have that intimate understanding of Christ as my life. I didn't realize that he was not way up there somewhere. In fact, when I was in the Navy serving uh, off uh, the coast of Vietnam during the Vietnam War, I would sit out on the deck of the ship and I would look up in the stars and I would think of God as far removed and I would just keep asking him to come near me or be close to me and stuff. And I didn't realize that he had already come into my heart and he was still there. Mm -hmm. That he, you, you don't get closer than one and he was already in me. And so uh, that realization prompted me then to uh, really prepare me. And so when God opened my eyes to the fact that he had made me one with him and that Jesus Christ had literally become my very life, uh, then uh, by the same token, he showed me he had made me to be a minister and that the message he had for me to deliver was to tell people what it means to be a new creation in Christ. God's made us brand new in him. And so it was like, okay, Lord, what does that mean? And then the journey began. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you train leaders and mm -hmm. uh, people in the ministry and you speak literally all over the world, many mm -hmm. third world countries and mm -hmm. countries in Africa and things like that. So you meet people from all different kind of cultures and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I can imagine that question mm -hmm. is universal. Mm -hmm. You know, who am I mm -hmm. and where am I from and why am mm -hmm. I here? Um, what is one of the biggest struggles that we have, a, as far as our, our identity is concerned? Uh, universally, what do you see as one of our biggest struggles as a, as a people? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we all need a point of reference. And um, when we talk about identity, it means who am I, but not just who am I in terms of my name. And we talked about the fact that I have a first or a last name, depending on which way you go. But no, what we're asking is, who is the real me? And what does that mean in my life? Um, it's a matter of significance. Am I really worth something? And if so, what? And for what? Uh, you know, we hear a lot about the emphasis on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, yes, God has purpose for us, but His purpose is not for us to go out and do something. His purpose is for us to be somebody. You know, we can all become somebody in the Lord. And that's the best you can be. When God makes us anew in Christ, we become the best that we can be. You can't improve on what God makes. Mm -hmm. And he's made us the best that we can be. But we're all out here trying to improve. In our Christian life, it's tragic, but so many Christians are trying to become something they already are in Christ. And they're trying to get something they've already got in Christ. They're trying to improve on God. We can't do it. Mm. But we need to see what God has made us in Christ and what that means to us everyday living. So that's what I've... Uh, gone about doing the book. The book is a matter of 21 years of, of work. I began 21 years ago when I was about to go on a mission trip on my first foreign uh, travel. And I was asking God, what would I say 
And how could I say it in a way that would be clear, simple, and concise? And so I began to put together this material, and over time it developed into a book. And now finally, thank God, in between all my travels and my counseling and other ministry, I've been able to complete it, and uh, uh, the Lord's blessed us, and that we have it now available for many people to... Uh, to know this same reality of who we are in Christ. Yes. Yeah. You work a lot with Christian leaders, mm -hmm. pastors and leaders of organizations and what have you. How can this book help them? Well, I see that first of all, it helps them personally. I know a lot of ministers and a lot of Christians would read the material and it does start out very basic and very elementary, but it expands. And it's not just a matter of content, but it's the progression of thought. See, much of Christendom is that we get bits and pieces of what Christianity is. And so I see this as providing pastors, first of all, with a foundation and a clear picture for themselves of what the Christian life is and how to live it, and then a tool whereby they can share with others and help them do the same. Mm -hmm. You know, the, uh, I heard somebody say the problem with Christian living is it's so daily. <laughs> <laughs> yes, know? yeah, that's it, true. It's just daily. It's, yeah. just, it's a daily oh, it walk. Is. It's a daily it journey. It's a daily walking mm -hmm. out the principles of the Word of God. And a lot of pastors, uh, particularly people in leadership positions, mm -hmm. uh, just struggle mm -hmm. on a daily basis mm -hmm. with some personal things, some ministry mm -hmm. things. But how, how can you help leaders, particularly mm -hmm. pastors, pe people like me, for instance, mm -hmm. that uh, travel and are in a areas of responsibility where they're responsible for employees and are responsible for leading others in organizations. Um, how can you, uh, how can you personally help them? What are some of the struggles that you see they're facing? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we hear the term burnout. Um, the reason the term is there is because we grow weary and faint. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord admonishes us uh, about that very thing, and he cautions us that we can grow weary and faint. In fact, Jesus' invitation is, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest unto your souls. Um, in our fast-paced world, there's a lot of pressure and demand placed on us. And uh, yet, in the midst of that, there is a rest for the weary. Hebrews 4 says there is a rest that does remain for God's people, and it's a rest for here and now. It's a rest in the midst of the activity. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what I try to do is help people learn how to rest uh, from their source of life within in the midst of the demands and pressures of, of the problems of life without. Yes. Yeah. So it's peace in the midst of the storm. Mm -hmm. It the really Bible is. Says, the Bible says whenever a man wants to do good, evil will always be present. And mm -hmm. you have a chapter title mm -hmm. in your book called Know Your Enemy. Yeah, from sure. your perspective, what part does he have to play in all this? Right. Well, I think we have to understand that the, that as the scripture says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There are principalities and powers. There are forces of evil and certainly the mastermind of it all is Satan, the mm -hmm. God of this world. And yet, praise God, Jesus Christ defeated him royally on the cross. So he put an end to his influence once and for all, but that does not negate the fact that he's still present. That's why it says evil is still present with me. He's not in us because we're a new creation in Christ, but his presence still remains in the world. So now our privilege is to know that in Christ we are more than a conqueror because Christ has overcome Satan. So now we can understand the ways of the devil and be discerning of his deceitful works and then counteract that by realizing that the victory that overcomes the world is our faith. Mm -hmm. We are victorious in Christ. Yes, praise God. Yeah, and so we can stand strong in the Lord in the power of his might rather than trying to fight the devil on, on, uh, with fleshly weapons. That's mm -hmm. why he says our weapons are not carnal. We don't have to do it with our mind you know, with our logic, but by the grace of God, we stand. Yes, yeah, yes, so. praise God. Yeah, oh, it is a praise. Now, you work one-on-one -on -one with people in a mentoring kind of uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about mm -hmm. that. Well, I found early on that um, we, we all need a friend and a brother in Christ. And uh, one of the things God showed me is that part of my role would be like Barnabas, an encourager to just be there to encourage others, and especially young men and women called into the ministry, that I could give them some input and share some insight of uh, the ways of God and some of the wisdom that I've gleaned in my walk with the Lord. So that, that's the call. Well, we're going to meet uh, one of the gentlemen that, that you have a mentoring relationship uh, with, and he's going to join us in our next segment. All He's right, a pastor, yeah. yes? Yes, great friend. Yes, and yeah. Pastor Reginald Screen is his name. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to meeting him. And so don't you go away because you're going to meet Pastor Screen and his relationship with Dr. Gregory, so don't go away. After this break, we'll be back 
with more of Babby's House. Thanks for coming back to Babby's House. I've been talking with Dr. Lewis Gregory, the author of Introducing the New You, the Ultimate Makeover. And it's been a very interesting conversation, very informative and inspirational. And Dr. Gregory was telling us uh, before we went to the break that he often has uh, others that he helps to uh, mentor and uh, to help spiritually and in, in a relationship to help them further uh, their leadership responsibilities and stir up the gifts that are inside them in a mentoring relationship. And we have a young gentleman who is a pastor here in the Atlanta area of the name of Dr. Reginald Screen. Thank you so very much for being with us, Doc, uh, Brother Pastor Screen. You, and uh, you are a friend and a, a sort of a mentee. Mm -hmm. uh, with Dr. Gregory. Talk to me about how you all met and what was it about your meeting that wanted you, that inspired you actually to just uh, get to, want him to get to know you better and help you in your leadership responsibilities. Um, the year was 1992. I was a, an associate pastor over at Hopewell Baptist Church and uh, he was over doing a conference called uh, Equipping the Saints and um, listening to him, I and it was a little bit different. Uh, I left that meeting feeling like my heart was burning inside. Mm -hmm. I said there was something about him that I needed to know. Connectedness. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And the stories that he told uh, on top of, you know, making personal application from the scriptures, it was just, it was amazing. So uh, it took about a year or two, though, before problems really caught up with me. And I called him and, and um, asked him would he counsel me. And from there we talked and... And it was strange. I said, Dr. Gregory, what's, what's going on? He said, your problem is that you don't know you have a problem. <laughs> and from there... Would you he, call that <laughs> denial? Or? <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, you know, Paul said that he did it ignorantly. And by that, he meant he was uninformed of what was going on. Okay. He, he was sincerely headed in the right direction, he thought. Mm -hmm. But in fact, he was not. Okay. And, and, uh, well, I was so just you had this problem, but you didn't know you had this problem. <laughs> yes, yes, mm -hmm. I was just on a... A performance um, trick, uh, just just really working hard, trying to work hard and hard and harder, mm -hmm. redoubling my efforts, and uh, he showed me who basically who I was in Christ and who I am in Christ, and that that's how I was introduced to the message. Amen. So mm -hmm. many of us are uh, walk out our this dailiness with a performance mentality, mm -hmm. thinking mm -hmm. that we have to be good and do good and do more and do bigger mm -hmm. in order to be accepted in, you know, in Christ and mm -hmm. accepted by others. Do you find that that's a big, mm -hmm. uh, a, a big thing that trips us up as Christians? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's huge. Um, you know, and there's a validity to that because our society is geared to performance and of necessity in the everyday life, you've got to get the job done. Mm -hmm. But the issue is not performing, but the source of the performance. See, so our ministry is called Source Ministries, and what we are called to do is point people to the source of life in Christ. He's the one who comes in us so that by His Spirit, He will enable us. So He's the performer. So rather than us trying to make it happen, our privilege is by faith to let it happen, and He does the work through us. Well, uh, Pastor Screen, um, because of your, um, this mentoring relationship Mm -hmm. that you've had here with Dr. Gregory, and I am, I'm assuming that because you're here today talking about it, that it has, it has made a difference in your life, mm -hmm. in, your, in your pastoring, mm -hmm. in your leadership abilities. How has it helped you? Uh, saved my marriage, saved mm. my ministry, saved my life, basically. Mm. You know, when you uh, perform to be loved and perform to be accepted, uh, you know, you're in trouble, you know, a lot of trouble. And so... It just kind of helped me understand myself and un helped me understand the Lord, and I'm just a better husband, a better father, and a better pastor for it. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure you would recommend this kind of a uh, mentoring relationship to others. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as a, as a pastor, speaking, speaking personally, mm -hmm. from a pastor's point of view, mm -hmm. there, there are probably other people, other pastors watching today's mm -hmm. show or pastor's wives, mm -hmm. um, and there are probably some red flags mm -hmm. that you've seen, you know, or felt in your inner man pop up. Mm -hmm. um, how would you encourage uh, 
pastors who might feel, you know, some checks in their spirit, you know, that may want to get help, but for various reasons won't do it. You know, maybe they're afraid, maybe they're hesitant, mm -hmm. maybe they're in denial, maybe they're ignorant, maybe they don't realize they have this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you encourage them today? Uh, first of all, whatever is denied cannot be healed. And mm. so, you know, you have to face up to the truth. And uh, getting a copy of this book, the in the Introducing the New You, will be a good start, great start. Uh, it's very uh, foundational and simple, but yet it's profound. Mm. It'll change your life. And it's all based in Scripture, check it against the Word. Uh, and I believe you know, they will be encouraged by that. Amen. Yeah. Well, we've mentioned leaders, pastors. Who else would benefit from reading Introducing the New You, The mm -hmm. Ultimate Makeover? <laughs> Well, of course, I think every Christian would because it really is the essence of what the Christian life is. And, and uh, again, I just go back to say most of us think we understand what the Christian life is, but we don't. We understand Bible history, Bible facts, Bible disciplines, but we don't understand that the essence of the Christian life is Jesus Christ. And when he came into my life, he came to be my life. I've said that before. I'll say it again. He, he wants to be himself in us. We talk about Babby's house. You invite us to be at home here. Jesus says, this is my house, but I want to be at home in you. Now, there's a big difference. Is Christ free to be himself in me? That's what I have to ask myself. Mm -hmm. And if he is, is he able to be at home and have his way in the day in and day out of my life? And when he does, I experience the peace and the joy and the victory that is my heritage as a child of God. And that's the wonder of it all. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, do you speak... Uh, here in the United States, all over the world. Tell me about mm -hmm. your, your ministry and your speaking ministry. Who would benefit from your speaking ministry? Mm. Well, I, I, I'm committed to uh, encouraging believers by being a support to the local church. So my focal point, by and large, is uh, in local churches. I go in, in in a discipleship capacity to focus on spiritual growth and spiritual awakening. Pastor Screen and I work together. I get in his church several times a year. We engaged in a spiritual awakening conference. Uh, we do things like that. I do that all over. I've been in uh, 26 states in the U.S. and 20 foreign countries, but it's essentially the same. It's, it's uh, just undergirding uh, the church and being a, a, a source of uh, encouragement to individual Christians as well. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for coming by Babby's house and sharing your book, Introducing the New You, The Ultimate Makeover by Dr. Lewis Gregory. Thank you, Dr. Gregory, for being our guest today. And thank you, Pastor Reggie Screen, uh, sweet pastor me. here in the Atlanta area who's benefited from uh, this book and also a mentoring relationship that's just furthered you in your leadership abilities and your personal walk with the Lord. Yes. Well, thank you all for coming today.